The operator of Japan's crippled nuclear plant is getting ready for a 40-year decommissioning program. The first step will be removing spent fuel rods. Tokyo Electric officials showed underwater video from the spent fuel storage pool in the number four reactor building. They say the spent fuel rods don't look damaged. The number four reactor was offline during the disaster last March. A hydrogen explosion a few days later caused debris to fall onto the rack containing the spent fuel rods. But the debris did not damage the fuel rods. Tokyo Electric says visibility in the pool is about five meters. One day I'm on top of the world. The next I'm saying... The U.S. Nuclear Regulatory Commission has approved construction of the first nuclear power plant in the country in more than three decades. The plan to build two reactors at the Vogel plant in the state of Georgia was approved by a majority vote on Thursday. The U.S. stopped building nuclear plants after the Three Mile Island accident in 1979. The new models were designed by Westinghouse Electric, the U.S. unit of Japan's Toshiba Corporation. Construction could begin as early as this year. The reactors are expected to start operating in 2016. Serious, sometimes fatal events including infections, tuberculosis, lymphoma, other cancers, and nervous system and blood disorders have occurred. Japan is looking to meet some of its energy needs using methane hydrate from the seabed around the country. The Japanese government has unveiled a deep sea drilling ship that's about to start exploring. The Chikyu has advanced GPS and control systems that let it stay in position even in rough seas. The ship will be drilling for methane hydrate a thousand meters below the seabed. Methane hydrate is an ice-like substance in which methane gas is trapped in water crystals. Japan's effort to extract methane hydrate from the seabed is the first in the world. If we get this first step right, the development will go smoothly. So we want to make it a success. Hi, I'm Arnie Gunderson from Fairwinds Associates. It's Thursday, March 31st, and you'll probably notice that this is the second update of a day. Normally I update you every other day. However, some, some disturbing video has shown up on Ustream that I wanted to talk to you about. First off, a little bit about my background. Um, I used to be an executive in the nuclear industry, and one of the divisions I ran built nuclear fuel racks for boiling water reactors. So nuclear fuel racks are something that I know a little bit about. Nuclear fuel racks look like this. This is a square cans at the bottom of essentially a swimming pool. And each can is designed to handle one nuclear fuel bundle. And that's the glowing thing you see sliding into the, into the can. Now, the, the wrapper around those cans it has boron in it. And that's designed to prevent a nuclear chain reaction from occurring in the pool. You don't want a chain reaction to occur in the pool. That should occur in the reactor. Now, what happened at Fukushima was when the whole site lost power, at Fukushima 4, there was no reactor operating. All the fuel had been removed and was in the fuel pool. Now, normally the pools are cooled. However, they lost power, so there was no longer any, any cooling. It appears that the pools boiled dry. The uh, roof blew off the building. That indicates that hydrogen was built up from uh, something called the Zircaloy water reaction that had to occur at temperatures over 2200 degrees. Now, after that, the Fukushima staff has been attempting to pour water into that reactor. And you can see in this picture that up the side of the building, 
is a, uh, is a hydraulic device. It's actually designed for pumping concrete that's pumping water up and over the roof and pouring water into the nuclear fuel pool. Well, this picture is undated, but it, when it was taken, it clearly shows that there's no water in the pool. Now, if you look, there's a, there's a green, long green device, and that's the refueling bridge. Normally, that glides along on rails above the pool, and the pool is that crystal clear water that you normally are used to seeing. Well, after the explosion, it has collapsed and is lying in the pool. Now, between seconds 33 and 37 on this video, you can see little boxes. And the little boxes are just to the left of that green bridge. The boxes are in air. Those boxes are the top of nuclear fuel racks. They're supposed to be under 30 feet of water. They're not. Now, what that means to me is a couple things. First off, the top of the nuclear fuel is exposed. Perhaps all the nuclear fuel is exposed, but certainly the top is. You can see steam coming up, but not from the top of the fuel. Down further in the cavity, there's steam coming up. So the water that they're spraying in is hitting the nuclear fuel and creating steam, but it's not filling that swimming pool. Now, the water has two purposes, cooling, but also shielding. So that means that the nuclear fuel is unshielded. That emits gamma rays, and the gamma rays go up into the sky, bounce off of air molecules through something called sky shine, and rain back down on the site as a background radiation that's much higher than normal. That makes work on site really difficult, and it makes work on that refueling pool almost lethal. Now, the other thing it means to me is that the nuclear fuel itself is extraordinarily hot, and the plutonium inside can become volatile. Now, I spoke yesterday in the, in the uh, earlier update about cerium being discovered off-site and plutonium being discovered. And the fact that the nuclear fuel pool does not have water in it, to me, indicates that it might be a clean path for those heavy elements to be escaping from the building and being discovered off-site. Now, I would recommend, based on this, that the evacuation zones should be pushed back further because of these heavy elements being released as well as the cesium that was also in those, in those racks. Um, it does have some serious consequences. Um, as this situation develops and perhaps more clear pictures uh, are, are available, I'll update you again. Thanks again. Well, you think you're safe here in the United States with all these nuclear plants even after Fukushima blowing up. And then we find out things like this. Non-licensed employee supervisor had a confirmed positive for alcohol during random testing. The employee's access to the plant has been terminated in his badge the act. Okay, we got drunks running on nuclear power plants. Drunk. Okay, I was flipping through here to see what's going on with our nuclear plants and radiation. You know, this is a leak. Okay, area cordoned off. Uh, gauge failure, um, and they're waiting for somebody to come fix it. Meanwhile, radiation spewing out all over the place. Drunks running reactors. <laughs> uh, you know why Obama told you that no radiation was coming from Fukushima? Because he knew that you couldn't disseminate between Fukushima radiation and the radiation in your backyard. Ha ha ha! Everything is fine. <laughs>